Hi guys, um, so this video is going to be about apprenticeships and whether uh, you know it's something that you should consider uh, and we're going to go through some pros and cons um, of apprenticeships to help you decide okay, whether that's something that you want to pursue. Now please bear in mind that uh, as well as applying for universities um, you can also apply to apprenticeships at the same time. It doesn't, you know, they don't, you don't need to apply to either or. Um, you can apply for both. Now, um, historically at BO, we have had um, uh, apprenticeships um, uh, that have been successfully uh, accessed by our students, and that this has increased year on year. Um, so, for example, we've had um, a student who um, has gotten into um, EY or KPMG. Uh, as an apprenticeship for accountancy um, and auditing. We've also had a student in, Mac McDon in Mott McDonald's for construction management, um, uh, as well as uh, Avensis. Um, we've had some uh, uh, apprentices um, from Beale uh, for plumbing, for um, cars like auto mechanics. Um, and we've also had, last year we had a student who became a paralegal apprentice with Ashford's. Um, and we've also had students who have become HR apprentices with uh, companies like, for example, the NHS. So um, there's a huge and wide variety of apprenticeships um, out there. Um, and it really, it's down to, you know, um, how well you search for these and um, how well you look into the criteria that are required. Um, to be successful uh, when you make your applications for these apprenticeships. Um, but before you look into um, what's out there, let's look at some general pros and cons um, uh, for apprenticeships in general. So a massive benefit of apprenticeship is that you can go directly into, um, you know, um, full-time employment. Um, and, you know, uh, you can learn on the job um, and, and not have to, you know, worry about... Um, paying tuition fees, for example. However, um, you also need to be really, really organized because remember, um, yes, you're in full-time employment, but that also means you are doing some part-time revision on the side. So you really need to balance your work hours alongside your um, revision or studying hours. Um, a second thing um, is, of course, uh, Pay. you know you get to start saving uh, you need you get to start um, you know building up your career ladder much sooner than others um, but it also means that um, you won't be able to experience to student life at university that's just something that will be limited um, because you'll be working with adults in a work environment um, so that uni experience is something that you know um, you could pot potentially um, miss out on um, the other thing I would say is um, in terms of a benefit is that you get professional accreditation um, uh, you know as opposed to those who um, go into the workplace without an apprenticeship this is better because you actually get a certificate and recognition um, at the end of it and if you continue along that progress uh, apprenticeship route, then you can also um, secure a degree apprenticeship, which is uh, equivalent in terms of standards um, uh, to a university degree. Um, the only thing is with, with apprenticeships is you do need to know exactly um, which vocation you want to go into. Um, whereas with a university degree, if you're taking like a general BA or BSc degree, um, then you still have an opportunity to sort of specialize later on. With apprenticeships, you are specializing much earlier on and you're sort of, um, you know, pigeonholing yourself into a specific career um, from the get-go. Um, now, if you're somebody who might change your mind, um, then that's something that, you know, you might need to um, reconsider apprenticeships. But if this is something where you know, no, nope, this is it, I can see myself doing this for the rest of my life. Um, and there are lots of, you know, um, you might have considered that there are progression opportunities um, within, for example, a big company like EY or KPMG. Um, and that's something that will be benefic beneficial for you. Um, then, you know, go for it. Um, go for the apprenticeship route. Um, in terms of um, 
uh, apprenticeships, what's good is because you start having uh, experience um, much earlier on compared to graduates who will who would join who would be joining the workforce later on, um, you you are in the lead with regards to experience. Um, you also get exposed to some of the um, uh, tips and tricks uh, within the industry um, for for progression much earlier on. So in that sense, you would be at a much higher advantage. Um, but the only thing is that if you um, decide that apprenticeship is not for you and you leave part way, then they might actually ask you to pay um, for uh, the apprenticeship fees. So the idea is that while you're with them, they pay for your education. But if you leave them midway and you don't complete your contract with them, then you have to pay them back for for those fees. Um, the other thing is as well is um, with apprenticeships, if you um, join them at a younger age, you are actually learning, um, if you not join them, but join a, a work industry at a younger age, you are actually being effectively molded into that professional um, environment. Uh, you're learning leadership skills, management skills much earlier on, um, which then helps for you to cement um, those skills much earlier on and hopefully allow you to master um, these skills perhaps better um, than somebody uh, your age who has just finished university. Um, now, the one thing to note is that you're not going to get paid large amounts of money um, uh, straight away. So, there, the, you know, you, you might be required to um, continue staying at home you know, with family um, while you are learning the ropes through this apprenticeship program because you probably might get paid, for example, um, you know, 20K per year. Um, uh, but again, it depends on what company you're with. Um, so, for example, I know that EY and KPMG, their pay is much bigger. It, it starts off on, in the high 20s, I believe, um, or, or 30K per year. So it depends on, so it really depends on w which company you're, you're going to be going with. Um, the other thing is as well, um, apprenticeships are really competitive because they are open to people from the age of um, uh, 16 to like 50. So you could be up against people who have a lot more experience than you who might even already have a degree and are now going into apprenticeships. So it is super competitive. Um, so you want to make sure that, you know, whatever work um, you've done today, um, it, it can be used in interviews to showcase that. And, you know, you want to be able to showcase that, you know, while you're not um, as, as older as the others, you are young, you're willing to um, learn the ropes, uh, you, you have that energy um, to adapt and, and um, you know, work with a changing environment um, and whatever uh, you've um, worked in so far, you have developed skills quite quickly um, and you've developed the, that insight um, to be able to teamwork and um, suggest you know improvements in the service of the company so um, it, it's all about you know how how you demonstrate that you know in the application in your interviews in the assessments um, that they have um, uh, and you know and the the level of success we've had so far with students that Beale have applied shows that um, you know with the right strategy um, you can um, successfully secure an apprenticeship now you should be um, aware that there are um, different types of apprenticeships and there are different levels. So um, a level three apprenticeship is one that A-level students would access um, or perhaps students who've just completed their GCSEs would also access. So this level is less competitive um, because others who are applying uh, may not have even completed um, their A-levels. They've just you know done their GCSEs. Um, uh, it, it's more accessible and it's um, essentially employers looking for, um, you know, younger uh, demographic of applications um, so that they can sort of mold them um, and train them specifically without um, some of the bad habits that the older applica applicants may have picked up um, in their 
um, previous experiences. Uh, the next level is a level four um, apprenticeship. Um, and this is equivalent to like a foundation degree or a first year of an undergraduate degree. Um, so you do need A levels uh, to be able to access these um, apprenticeships. So they will be looking for, you know, predicted grades um, uh, for your current A levels in order for you to be successful. Um, a level five um, apprenticeship and above is a degree apprenticeship essentially, um, and it can all it can they can be equivalent to a bachelor's degree and um, even higher ones can be equivalent to master's degrees. So um, obviously you'll be targeting the ones between levels um, three and five um, so that uh, uh, you, you know, you are applying to a level that's actually realistically achievable for you and you have um, some grades uh, to show um, your ability to, you know, um, uh, be organized, um, to uh, retain information, to learn um, new information and to be able to demonstrate that. Um, and really that's what, you know, showcasing grades on, on a CV is all about. You know, are you an organized, are you a determined person, are you somebody that works hard? Um, but work experience alongside those grades will also um, enhance that, that um, skill set of being able to be um, organized, etc. Um, what you also want to consider when you're looking for apprenticeships is, you know, what are the hours like? Um, how much time do you get um, to study versus, you know, um, being on site, you know, at work? Um, do you get a mentor that's um, allocated to you? How in, how will they support you? Um, how often do they meet with you? Um, what kind of evidence do you have to produce um, while, while you're doing the apprenticeships? You know, is, is it a, some sort of portfolio? Is it project based? Okay, so um, when it comes to applying, you want to think about um, what are the key steps um, to making the application. So first and foremost, foremost of course, is getting the CV right. Um, so if you are going to be applying for apprenticeships, please make sure that by the end of pro progression week, you have a draft of a CV there so we can have a look at it and give you further feedback. Um, and so you write the CV and we have some uh, guidance on how to do that um, uh, in on Moodle and we'll be also discussing tips um, uh, on how to write a good CV um, during the, the live session. Um, so that's the first thing you write the CV. Now when you submit your CV, um, and usually it's going to be online, um, you will then get a, an email reply if you're successful um, and you're shortlisted for a um, an assessment. Now not all um, apprenticeships um, will ask for an assess assessment. They might straight jump straight into it, the interview process. Um, but I'm noticing over the last couple of years, there is an additional assessment process before you get asked for an interview. Um, and that online assessment um, is uh, sort of like a simulated um, quiz that, that you answer online. Um, it's timed, so they're looking at your, um, you know, your your reaction um, speed. Um, they also will have um, scenarios within that assessment. So, um, you know, they will say, oh, you know, when you are given a project and you're not sure how to um, uh, approach that project or you're not sure about the details of the project, what would you do? Or let's say you had a customer who was um, dissatisfied, what would you do? Um, so they'll have those kinds of uh, assessments um, and they are, you know, algorithmically um, devised so that uh, the outcomes of the assessment are pretty much automatic. You know, it, they'll rank you, uh, you know, amongst the other applicants who would have also carried out that online assessment to determine whether you should be shortlisted for, you know, a further um, step in the process. Um, so I would highly encourage you to apply to as many different um, apprenticeships as you can so that you get to practice as many different types of online assessments as you can um, because the more you do them and the more uh, sort of um, uh, confident you'll feel um, with subsequent applications um, and you just get better at, at learning how to respond um, uh, to these online assessments. Once that's done, then um, you can be called into an assessment center. Um, so this is where, for example, they might have um, 
like a group interview or they give you a task to do as a group and they sort of observe how you um, tackle that task. So it's, so it's kind of like um, like The Apprentice, like with Lord Sugar, where they actually, you know, give you a little uh, a group task to do, but um, obviously you're not running around um, talking to people, but y y you're given a, a task um, and they just want to see how you work with others, you know, whether you're listening um, to others, whether you're giving um, I ideas, whether you're contributing, and, and the level of contribution that, you, that you're able to make. Um, and then once you're successful in that round of things, then f you can finally have like a one-to-one -one interview. Um, usually it's done by a phone or, or in person. Um, uh, and then if you're successful, then they'll send you an email or they'll give you a call to sort of say that, hey, you know, well done. Um, so that so that's sort of probably the most rigorous um, uh, apprenticeship, uh, apprenticeship application process that I've come across so far. Um, and these are representative of companies such as EY, KPMG. Um, uh, there's one more that I can't think of at, at the top of my head, but law apprenticeships will also be similar, actually. Um, uh, but some of the more straightforward ones that don't have these sort of different processes are um, ones that just usually involve an interview. So literally just submit your CV to as many places as you can. And then if you're shortlisted, then they invite you for an interview. Um, and then uh, if they're happy with you, then they might shortlist you and call you for another interview again. So um, really every company um, differs uh, in, in how they proceed with their process. Um, that's it from me. Now, just a couple of, um, websites, um, uh, before I end the video, um, that uh, you should look into. Um, there's the, uh, Career Finder, uh, on UCAS. Um, there's the Apply Apprenticeship website with the government. Um, there's the notgoingtouni.co.uk website. And then, um, there's also Prospects. They have a really good website as well that um, sort of helps you to see which companies are offering apprenticeships um, for the different sectors. So that's also a really good one. Uh, maybe what I'll do is I'll switch my screen so that uh, so you can see here. Um, you can see here these are some of the websites that I've put together in this document here, and. Um, these uh, websites um, and this document will be shared. Um, actually, it's already on Moodle, so um, please do have a look at it. Um, these websites here are for certain FAQs you might have. Um, you know, if you're not sure what uh, industry you want to apply for, then there's this really cool sort of um, career test that you can do to see if that's something that suits your personality and um, your, your particular traits. Um, there's there's a blurb here on salaries and what the minimum pay is and um, uh, what you can expect in terms of a salary. And then here are the different pros and cons that um, I was going through with you. Um, but this is just a more concise version of that. Okay. And then lastly, um, here are some really good websites that... Um, help you to prepare for um, interviews and uh, give you ideas on how to write a really good CV. So I'd encourage you um, to check these out um, and uh, we'll see you in, in the live sessions and, and please bring us any questions that you might have um, so we can help you individually. Thank you.